It was May 3rd, Redfall had just released. I was excited because I've enjoyed so many other games from Arcane Studios. With that in mind, I dove right in. I woke up on a ferry to see vampires feeding on a body right in front of me. I didn't know what to do, I was frozen. She's coming. After a few moments, a vampire with a glowing halo came into the room. She lifted me off the ground and started speaking to me. You can't walk away from me. No one can. You all belong to us. The others want you dead. But I want you here. Alive. I can use you. A strong beam of sunlight cut short the monologue. She left, and I knew I had to find my way out. You will never see the sun again. Alright, I'm gonna head out. I started looking around for something to defend myself with and to find a way off the ferry. There it is. Well, look at that. After punching the door release, I found that something major had happened. The water was towering above me, seemingly frozen in time. The sun was then blocked out by the very same vampire that was just speaking to me on the ferry. Given my first objective, I moved forward to Redfall Shore. I encountered some cultists on my path, had to take them out as they were in my way. The name is Josh. James Josh. Wait. Bond? Josh Bond? What do you guys think works better here? I was then tasked with eliminating all cultists at the fire station. I was happy to oblige. Oh my god, he's skating. Did you see that? I stalked a cultist who learned how to walk without moving their legs. Following them to a quiet area, I delivered the people's elbow. A nearby garbage truck allowed me to jump from it to the roof to gain an advantage of height over the remaining cultists, so I took my chance. Freeing up the fire station, I then heard a commotion behind a door. Hey! You alright in there? Yes! Hello? We're in here! Are yeah, you- Yeah, I know. Are the cultists still around? I can't open the door until they're gone. Or oh, dead! Dead would be better. They cut the power on us. We've got wounded in here. And they got a blood sucker in the basement. They all answer to it. Can you help us out? Hearing the people behind the door tell me there's a vampire in the basement, I knew what I had to do. I conveniently found a shotgun with a stake attachment to it and headed downstairs. Reload, reload, reload. Where'd you go? Are you behind me? You are! We got him! That's it. Got them all. First vampire down. As I stake the vampire, I unlocked a new ability, a raven friend that spots enemies for me. I went back upstairs to tell everyone the good news. After they unlocked the door, they immediately got to work on making the fire station a headquarters and safe house for survivors. I set out on the next goal of getting supplies when suddenly a couple helicopters were blasted by lightning. My goal then changed to look for survivors of the crashes and scavenge supplies from the helicopters. Searching those choppers could be the fastest way to find supplies. The world seemed cold and empty. I met extremely little resistance on the road. As I made my way through the center of town, I found a safe house in need of assistance. Some kind of vampire lookout. The occupants told me of a vampire underboss who had taken control of a nearby museum. I immediately headed over there to rid them of their problem. After trying to stealthily clear rooms, I was spotted and attacked by the underboss's entourage. Nothing? Come out! Don't you want to be something? I am something! The fear.
No, thank you. Fighting my way through them, I made my way to the rooftop to finish the job. There they are. With the underboss out of the way, it was time to get back on track to securing the helicopter crashes. Yo, there's someone here. Nah. After a tough fight on the bridge, I went to the first crash site. It had cultists all over it, and I had to get rid of them. Luckily, I had learned how to cloak myself and become nearly invisible. Show me where they are, Burb Man. Go on, Burb. Someone. All right, go over here, get out of the way. <laughs> well, that's it. That was kind of awkward. I found a functioning radio in the burning remains of the helicopter and was able to listen in on the cultist plans. The Hollow Man, he served these choppers up to us on a platter. So just make sure you get those goddamn supply crates. I knew I had to make it to the supply crate before the cultists, so I immediately made way to where Bellwether agents were holding out. I used long distance to my advantage to clear them all. Oh yeah, look at that damage. Do you not see me? I guess not. It was at this point when I really started questioning the quality of the game. The seemingly lifeless world and terrible enemy AI made me wonder if things would get better. There's the bellwether supplies. Seeing the supply crate, I successfully secured it and made plans to move to the next helicopter. Better go check out that second chopper first. Though. Right as I was leaving, the cultist showed up looking for the supplies as well. Why are there so many people here all of a sudden? What? What? I mean, we'll take that level up. As I was moving towards the other helicopter crash, I stumbled upon another safe house and was told about another vampire underboss. However, this one was stronger than the one from earlier. This one had bullet deflecting shields and was able to suck out my blood and heal itself from a distance. Oh my god, he's got shields up. Well, that's a new This is strange. Ouch. Trying to find a moment to actually hit it. I did my best to keep line of sight to a minimum and took out the shade tree killer. Beautiful. Feeling accomplished, I then learned a new ability. I learned how to materialize a rifle out of thin air that did the aiming for me. While active, the rifle deals extraordinary damage and locks onto enemies one after the other. I was finally free to make my way over to the second helicopter crash. When I got there, I discovered a new type of weapon inside the crates. Stake Launcher fires improvised stakes which deal heavy damage to vampires and can finish them off from a distance. With the job done, I headed back to the fire station to pick up more work. Vampire slaying is a busy job. Mission Rendezvous was an Avon clinic at Redfall Region. Objective was to clean up some film footage. I was tasked with going to Avon Therapeutics, a medical facility that might have evidence of their work in relation to the sudden appearance of vampires in Redfall. I cleared them all out and found a closed off room that had an access hatch on top. I dropped in and found a button that would open up the door to the incinerator, the scene where evidence was being destroyed. See, I knew I heard something in here, man. I knew it. Now that I had a film reel, I headed over to the local theater to see what was on it and why Avon felt the need to have it all destroyed. The 
the old movie theater downtown has a projector that'll play this. This wasn't easy as I was met by a whole new class of vampire when I arrived. Her name was Lumiere and she was a shroud vampire. What is this? Lumiere. Interesting. She made it difficult to see as the area was shrouded in purple darkness and bellwether operators were backing her up to prevent me from using the theater's projector. It has so much health. Finally, with everything out of my way, I was able to use the projector to watch the film reel. The evidence was damning. I returned to the fire station to let everyone know what I had found. While they were thinking of what to do next, I took another job. Someone was broadcasting fake rescue plans over radio to lure in survivors and hand them over to vampires for feeding. I had to put a stop to this and help anyone that was lured in by the broadcast. They're using the local radio station to lure folks to the shipyard. Putting down honey traps to catch people looking for help. On my way to Dead Catch Records, I stopped at an abandoned church that had some vampires lurking within, including another underboss. I knew this was the perfect opportunity to test out the new stake launcher I had found at one of the helicopter crash sites earlier. <laughs> it just one-shot him! The local cultists didn't like what they saw as much as I did. They swarmed the church and tried to take me out alongside the remaining vampires. Oh god, I never reloaded. Making my way downtown, I went to the source of the broadcast to put a stop to it. I wasn't surprised to see cultists here doing the vampire's dirty work again. Sleep time. See how it automatically aims for me? Nuts. The room I needed access to was locked, but I found the key in the break room. I made my way into the room and shut off the broadcast for good. No talkie. All right, about the broadcast. It's time to stop. Oh, shipyard office key, we'll take that. I luckily found the shipyard office key as well. Mighty convenient as I was headed there next to free the people lured in by the broadcast. As I work my way into the shipyard, I find the rest of the cultists involved in the plot of the fake broadcast. The one that mattered the most was in the locked office that I had the key for. Cultists were up to something real strange. After returning to the fire station for supplies, I was asked by one of the locals to drop off his father's watch at his mother's gravesite so that two of them could be together. In a world where sentimentality is all too rare, I couldn't say no. I was hoping you could do something. Would you take it and place it on my mother's grave? I went to the graveyard to find a lone vampire, quickly took care of it, and suddenly a whole group of cultists ambushed me. A perfect opportunity to use the aimbot ability. Listen, I'm just gonna keep using the fence to block your damage. Oh my god. Oh, dude! <laughs> the graveyard was clear. I put the watch in its place and was immediately met with a choice. I can steal the pocket watch blood remnants? Oh, I kind of want to do it, guys. I kind of want to do it. I'm having a moral dilemma here. A moral dilemma. I'm taking it. Yoink. I suck. It was time to go to the hollow man's home where oh. he did most of his work. Whoa. I needed to figure out how to find him. Perhaps his private lab has clues. The place was swarming with vampires. Ghosted out. And while exploring the mansion, I found a few different dolls. All right, we got all the dolls. 
I found a key to Dr. Addison's daughter Amelia's room, and upon entering, I found a dollhouse with spots I could place the dolls. I did so, and it transported me to a pocket dimension with Amelia's memories of her father experimenting on her. Oh, what the hell, man. Using his own daughter to learn how to become immortal. The time had come to figure out where the Hollow Man was hiding. One of the survivors at the fire station came up with a plan. It required me to go bring some equipment to a lighthouse and lure out a special vampire. I made my way to a ship with the equipment I needed. The ship was seemingly abandoned, but vampires were waiting around, including the former captain of the ship. They nearly got me, but I was able to aimbot my way through the mall and come out with the Spectrum Analyzer. Oh, I almost died. Gorgeous. As soon as I put the equipment at the lighthouse, the vampire god sent a rook after me, one of the strongest amongst vampire ranks. Uh oh. Defeats the rook. Enough. You just couldn't quit trouble me, could you? Oh my god, there you are. It dropped one of the best weapons I had seen at this point in the game, perfect for fighting the Hollow Man with. Perfectly normal automatic assault rifle. Big. With the knowledge of where the Hollow Man is hiding, I took my newly acquired weaponry to his lair to dispose of him. The Hollow Man. Is this what you want? I opened up the fight with my aimbot ability to do heavy damage right away, but the Hollow Man was able to siphon my health and killed me before I realized what was happening. Oh, ah, wow. The Hollow Man was draining my health that whole time and I had no idea. Now knowing he has this power, I went back in for another try and played a lot safer by breaking line of sight whenever he started to siphon. Wait. Every time the Hollow Man needed a break from the fight, he sent waves of shades and blood bags after me. I used this to my advantage. It was all over for the Hollow Man. Oh god, my accuracy is so bad right now. There we go. Oh, these actually are giving me super things. That's good. Oh, wow, wasn't ready for that, dude. Oh, we got our super back as well, very rapidly. What am I stuck on? There we go. That's not all of them. There it is. Let's go ahead and heal up real fast. And then super. Stake him. You 
Now that that side of Redfall was safe from the vampire threat, it was time for me to move on to Burial Point. There was word of two other vampire gods that were afflicting the area, and with the power I had, I was feeling confident in being able to take them down. Reverend Eva said you took out one of the head vampires downtown. Good for you. We've got more out here. My help was requested at the Maritime Center, so I said my goodbyes and went on my way. When I arrived, there was a twisted tree wrapped around the building. With vampires all around protecting it, I had to figure out a way to get rid of it. Oh, the stutter there. Crazy. What happened to him? Where'd he go? After I somehow ran off the Heartwood Fiend, the tree was destroyed and I was able to make my way inside the Maritime Center to meet the survivors of Burial Points. I introduced myself to everyone, stocked up on ammo, and was given the rundown on the vampire situation. Hey. Uh -huh. Jacob, right? Yeah. I'ma call you Smiles. Please don't. It turns out two vampire gods were in a war competing for control over Burial Points. The perfect time to take them both down. I immediately set out to gather intel on Miss Whisper and Bloody Tom. Bellwether converted an old farm into a base of operations, and since they were involved with the Hollow Man, I knew they'd have intel on Miss Whisper and Bloody Tom. When I arrived, I rushed the barn and started weakening their defenses. Searching around, I found nothing until I spotted a ladder. Climbed all the way up to find a man named Pinky, the local leader of the Bellwether organization, this is where I'd sit up if I were still with the unit. I will shoot you. Dead as a dormouse if you test me. Pinky, how did you lose health? And why are you talking smack up here all by yourself? Alright. After a friendly visit with Pinky, I left with a clue that led us in the direction of an underground bootlegger tunnel that would lead us to the barn with potential information on this whisper. I said screw that and went for a frontal assault. There is a lot of enemies here. Nice hitboxes, dude. With the enemies being as dumb as they are, the assault was a major success and I got the intel I was searching for. I kept looking around for more information when I found a key to the root cellar. I unlocked the door and was greeted with more intel, this time for Bloody Tom. No vampires, huh? I returned to the Maritime Center to turn in the intel when I was approached by Rebecca. We got a radio message from Anna. She and Joe came to join us after we sent the all clear. But now she's stuck in some vet clinic and the baby's coming. Joe tried to give her up to one of those vampires. I don't know how she got away, but she needs help. I ran as quickly as I could over to the vet clinic to defend them from vampires and cultists. After a job well done, the electricity went out and I had to turn it back on. I made my way to the substation, made friends with everyone hanging out there, and then started the process of turning on the power. <laughs> Wall hacks crazy, man. And I had to defend it for a while. Huh.
It was a very eventful five minutes as I was restoring power, when suddenly an angler vampire showed up and decided I was lunch. Oh, you got me, nice. Wow, it actually killed me. I quickly ran back to the substation, got my revenge, turned on the power for Anna and Lawrence, and headed back. Just gotta turn on the power right here. It's, it's a girl. Well, so it's a girl. When I arrived at the vet clinic, the baby had just been born. I didn't know what to do with myself, so I took all the vet clinic supplies and bailed. Let me just loot this building up a little bit. Take all your supplies. You don't have very many supplies. Back at the Maritime Center, I found an envoy from Bloody Tom. He wanted to make a truce of sorts and perhaps welcome me into his cult of followers. I had no plans on drinking Bloody Tom's Kool-Aid, but I figured if they were going to give me such an easy in to their campgrounds, then I may as well go and cause a scene. When I arrived, I was greeted at the door by a voice. Hey, just keep your guns to yourself. If so much as blink wrong, we shoot you. Got it? Go talk to Costell. She's the boss. Waiting for you up in the ranger station. The campground was huge and there were cultists and vampires everywhere. The perfect area to hit Bloody Tom's forces hard. I made my way to speak with Costell at the ranger station. I was made aware of a test, but I was distracted by a locked safe. Shit, let's get this done. I wonder if they'll get mad if I open this up. Crane controller. Bloody Tom's remnant is somewhere in Oh, country. well. I found the controller for the crane that would let me lower the door to a psychic space. Crane controller. See Boss Castell upstairs at the ranger station? She decides who uses the crane controller. Uh, yeah, about that. She's no longer with us, so... We're just gonna bring it on down. You dig? I fought my way all the way to the end where I found a handbell, the remnant needed to unlock the door to Bloody Tom's lair. After making my way out of the psychic yep. space, I was attacked by another rook sent by the vampire gods. They weren't happy with me, it seems, getting in the way of all their efforts. I made my life easier. With Bloody Tom's remnant in hand, I knew I needed three underboss skulls alongside it to access Bloody Tom, so I went hunting. Oh my. Billy Fetch. What a nice guy making himself known to me. Eager to test out my new armaments and feeling like Miss Whisper had been left out of all the fun for a while, I assaulted her cult's base of operations and accessed her psychic space to search out her remnant. Gloria tried to stop me, but the new shotgun just wasn't having it. I took the remnant and made my way back to the Maritime Center for supplies. 
It was time to take on Bloody Tom and be rid of him once and for all. I searched out the door to his lair, gave up the three skulls and Tom's remnant, and made my way in. Wake up, Tom. I'm gonna give you the business. Hi, bud. You're gonna move now, right? You're gonna move. No? There you go. Now you're moving. Uh, not sure if that was a play. I don't think it was. I'm in pain. Barely lived. Alright, I'm gonna go all the way back here now because I don't want to get hit by a sword. Okay, I'm alive. Let me heal up again. Oh, you bastard. All right, now we can move up again. How's that working out for you, Tommy boy? You got a sword? Okay, let's hide behind this again. Throw it. Nice, dude. Good job, Tom. Everyone's clapping for Tom. Good job, buddy. Okay, now we need to hide again. All right. Here comes the sword. You're going to throw it at me, and I'm going to not get hit by it. Beauty. All right. Yeah, there he is. Okay, that's doing nothing. That's doing nothing at all. Goodbye, Tom. Sending bloody Tom to the underworld wasn't enough for me. I knew that Miss Whisper would move fast with her rival disappearing and I didn't waste any time getting in her way. I started hunting down her underbosses to let her know I was on my way. Mr. Crooked. Open up with a nice sniper rifle shot. Almost one shot him. Beautiful. With the skulls gathered and her remnants in hand, I made my way to Miss Whisper's lair. Oh, it's so foggy out here. Ah, there she is. Those handguns actually doing great against her. Determined to put an end to the vampire menace in Redfall, I aimbotted my way to victory. You see, after I did a third of Miss Whisper's health bar and damage, she would send waves of shades at me that replenished my aimbot ability's cooldown. I used this to my advantage to get rid of her quickly. I'm gonna use my super here. Nice. 
Got through that phase real quick. Got my super back again, so I can just burn her with that too. Oh my god. You I <laughs> love that it locked onto her, even though she wasn't even there. You can kill these parts of me. You can kill me. What the? <laughs> I think I killed her a little too quickly. The game, the game wasn't quite sure what to do there. Now that Bloody Tom and Miss Whisper were out of the way, it was time to celebrate. Or at least I thought, until I remembered there was one more vampire god left. The one that greeted me in the very beginning, the Black Sun. She sent her cultists and followers to swoop into Redfall after the destruction of the other vampire gods, putting us back to square one. It wasn't over though. I got a mysterious invite to the festival from a ghostly figure telling me to meet it there. Out of ideas and feeling like it was a trap, I went to see what it was all about. Everybody. Telling me to come to the Ferris wheel. I arrived at the festival grounds to find a ton of vampires putting a seal on the entrance to the Ferris wheel. I took care of everything in the area and broke the seal to find the ghostly figure in front of a disfigured vampire god, Charles. My name is Charles Beck. You've already met my sister, Claire. It turns out Charles is the twin brother of Claire, who is now the Black Sun. She had betrayed him when he was having second thoughts about their efforts to find a way to become immortal. He invited me there to offer me a deal, find all three pieces of his remnant and end his life in exchange for the Black Sun's remnant so I can take her down too. Being unsure about how trustworthy this vampire would be, I took the deal as it was the fastest way to get what I wanted and I needed this ride to be over with. End my sister's life. Right. I went to all the different psychic spaces, watched the memories play out, and put together all the pieces of the remnant together. There's that word again. They had the kind of life I never had. Wonder what happened. Let's get back to blood bank, Chuck. I should have died, but the blood wouldn't let me. I knew we were guilty. When my sister murdered me, she brought out her son. As Charles burned away, he gave me the Black Sun's remnant, an antique clock which his sister had used to bash him over the head with in an attempt to murder him. Turns out Charles is a man of his word. She used this clock to kill him. Her own twin brother. We're going to use it to take her down. He's got to wait for the right time. With all the vampire god skulls and the Black Sun's remnants in hand, I searched out the door to her lair and made my advance to the final fight of the game. I was feeling confident as the previous bosses gave me little trouble and the weapons I found along the way were great. Oh my god, I can't see what's happening. I'm falling. I can't, I can't see what's happening at all, dude. The <laughs> Unfortunately, soon after I arrived for the fight, I lost to my great nemesis, Gravity. You see, me and Gravity go back a long way, long before the time of Redfall. It haunted me everywhere I go, and if it was possible to die to Gravity, I almost always did. Not all was as it seemed though. Upon respawning, I noticed I still had my ghostly sniper rifle for my ultimate ability in my hands. Um, I still have my super out. I couldn't switch to my regular weapons at all, and I had infinite ammunition. Is this normal? It seems that even gravity was over this game and granted me a boon in the form of a bug. 
Did I break the game? I might have broken the game. I have infinite super right now. Um, this is something. And it's just instantly killing everything, so this is weird. <laughs> what is this? I don't even have to stake anything anymore. Oh, wow, this totally busted. I can even reload it. I can reload my super. <laughs> what? No better time for discovering this bug than the final boss fight. Like, I can't change my weapons or anything. I'm just stuck with this. I, I, I can't do anything. I'm pressing one, two, and three, and it does nothing. They'll do as I say. <laughs> we got that rook as well. Nice. Nice. After taking the Black Sun out in style, the job was finally done. All the vampire gods were slain and Redfall could return to normal. I'd like to say this is a fun adventure, but there's so many things wrong with this game that I couldn't even begin to list them here. I expect better of Arcane Studios, and I'm hoping that this is just a hiccup in their otherwise great library of games. Thank you all so much for watching my video. It's the first time I've ever put this amount of effort into planning and editing a video, so making it all the way to the end means a hell of a lot to me. I hope you had a good time here. I'm looking forward to making more videos like this with more games in the future. Be sure to thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for when more videos like this one happen on my channel. Also feel free to check out all the links in the description down below to follow me on social media and support what I do. See you all soon. Until then, be excellent to each other.